Welcome to Deluxe. We all love gadgets that entertain us and save us time. But what are the best gizmos in the world? Join us as we explore the latest devices and toys that will make your life just that much easier and fun. If you love your electronic toys, one of the best places to look for the latest devices and appliances is at the annual Consumer Electronics Show held in Las Vegas. From giant plasma screen TVs to pocket-sized laptops, gadget fans can sample the very latest in sound, vision and entertainment in the fast-paced world of consumer technology. One of the hottest new products at the 2008 show was designed with the style-conscious gadget lover in mind. Italian designer Giorgio Armani has joined forces with Samsung Electronics to design a mobile phone that is selling for one and a half thousand dollars. The Armani Samsung phone is the size of a credit card and just ten and a half millimeters thick. Things are definitely getting smaller. Television is getting more portable. For a few years in a row, CES was really a TV show. And everywhere you went, it was these giant screens. And there's still 150-inch plasma on the, the show floor, of course. But now we're seeing television built into cell phones instead, or we're seeing ultra-thin OLED displays. Definitely the technology trend is smaller this year. Another highlight is the new internet format, WiMAX. It's what we call 4G, fourth generation extremely fast. In fact, what it is, is it is the ability to access the internet and have a broadband connection uh, while moving at 60 miles an hour in the back of a car or a train or what have you. So it's, it is ultra fast connectivity on the move. Hardware company Alienware unveiled its curved computer screen. Due to hit the market later this year, the three-foot wide screen will bring a new level to the gaming experience. By providing peripheral vision to users, the screen would allow people playing a driving game, for example, to see the road to their left and right, not just straight ahead. For the environmentally aware consumers, there's Voltaic System solar bags. These handy bags are mobile solar power generators designed to charge virtually all handheld electronics. The newly released model is powerful enough to charge laptop computers. The Voltaic systems have a line of solar bags. The recent release, which came out yesterday, was our new computer bag. And it's got a 15 watt panel on the outside. It's designed to charge laptops. Uh, it's the only product in the market capable of doing that. The panel mounted on the bag's exterior charges the battery pack cased inside the bag, which stores any surplus power generated, so it's available when you need it, not just when the sun is out. The smaller bags produce four watts of power, so one hour in direct sun will power over three hours of music on your iPod. For those wanting to watch TV in bed, K2 debuted a motorised underbed lift which deploys a flat screen TV up to 50 inches wide from under the bed or behind a piece of artwork. It's a luxury that will set you back about $14,000. Meanwhile in Britain, the lure of boys' toys and high-tech gadgets attracted thousands to the annual Stuff Exhibition. I think people will be looking for those real value products and there are some examples here. The other big trend, I think, for this year has been wireless in all its shapes and forms. One example of this is the Evoke digital radio from Pure, which allows users to connect to the internet to search for radio channels from all over the world. The inbuilt Wi-Fi function replaces the need for a PC. The British-based company has the biggest radio development facility in the world, utilising the skills of many radio engineers. The Evoke Flow is our connected radio, so it's a combination between Wi-Fi, DAB, FM and media streaming from your digital music connection. It's a, it's a very clever interface um, which helps the user get access to thousands and thousands of internet radio stations across the globe. British company Hoverit has created its first lounger, a unique suspended acrylic chair which uses the repelling force of magnets to float. But at $8,000, it's more luxury than High Street. It's a chair, it's a lounger, but uh, it works on magnets rather than any solid attachments to the ground. So these industrial grade magnets just hold you and you just hover. So it's really comfortable. One of Japan's leading inventors, Yasuyuki Fujimura, is exploring ways to lessen human dependency on electricity. 
Dr. Fujimura is head of Atelier Non-Electric, a laboratory that invents products that do not depend on electricity. His goal is to design innovative, low-tech and environmentally harmless products. By creating these non-electric appliances, Dr. Fujimura is trying to show alternative options for everyday life. It suddenly came to me that if so-called developing countries started using electric products just the way developed countries do, the earth would not be able to sustain itself anymore. That is when I thought of offering an invention that causes no harm to the planet, even if they are produced in hundreds of millions. His inventions include a non-electric dehumidifier and a non-electric refrigerator. The dehumidifier uses a paper filter to absorb water and changes colour from blue to pink when it reaches full capacity. Taken outside to dry in the sun, it can be used infinitely, consumes no energy and there are no emissions. At $150 a piece, the product was sold to 500 clients throughout Japan. The non-electric dehumidifier is effective and also looks effective because it collects water in a visible way. This non-electric dehumidifier does not show a pool of water, but it changes its colour from blue to pink as it absorbs humidity. It makes me feel like I'm watching a living creature and I feel attached to it. The non-electric fridge holds 200 litres of water in its storage space and is equipped with a radiation plate at the top. The refrigerator uses the principle of natural convection cooling and radiation cooling. During daytime, the temperature is kept roughly below 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Although non-electric devices are less powerful and perhaps less convenient than the conventional electric appliances, they are feasible alternatives to manage everyday chores without electricity. I think it is fun to rethink how we use electricity and find interesting ways to do without it. What I want to do is to offer options. Coming up, we explore the toys of the seriously rich and the latest gadgets to increase your driving pleasure. As any parent can tell you, the greatest lovers of gadgets are the young and the young at heart. The upmarket American department store, Neiman Marcus, has compiled a list of luxury gifts to suit every taste. There's a $65,000 Las Vegas trike for the showy traveler, or you can buy your very own Zeppelin balloon for a cool $10 million. The gift that has many men envious is a customized suit of armor. It's modern technology mixed with 15th century style. It's a custom-made suit of armor based on the 15th century style. We think it fits in perfectly. The, the man of today would buy a Brioni suit, the man of yesteryear would buy a custom suit of armor. If you think these items are just a gimmick and that no one really buys them, think again. Neiman Marcus has already sold two of the Zeppelins, at least one suit of armor, and the Las Vegas trikes are almost sold out. The Rob Report, a magazine for the extremely wealthy, has compiled its list of luxury gifts. One of the Rob Report's most popular suggestions is the Rin Speed Car, a sporty vehicle which turns into a boat at the flip of a switch. And if you want to actually go underwater, not just glide on top of the waves, there's the Underwater Aviator, a personal submarine which can descend to depths of nearly 500 metres. It's not just adult toys that can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. A few very lucky children might just get some presents from FAO Schwartz's high-end range. For $300,000, you can buy a motion simulator, a giant pod which moves about taking you on a high-speed car chase. Or a kid can drive their very own car, a Ferrari, of course. The $50,000 child-size fully working car is complete with sunroof, music system and top quality engineering. Ferrari is very nicely appointed. It has got a full leather interior and it's gas powered. It goes, uh, it's got three speed transmission, it goes up to 15 miles an hour. Another favourite with kids, but perhaps not with parents at a $150,000 price tag, is a giant 22-foot-long floor piano, which plays music when the notes are stepped on, and was made famous by Tom Hanks in the movie Big. 
And for the super rich music lover, the latest must have accessory is an Apple iPod MP3 player with a difference. This one is made of gold and hand set with diamonds, but there's only one catch. It's the only one in the world and it's not for sale, but was auctioned off for charity. Based on the ever popular Apple iPod shuffle player, the iDiamond was designed by Norwegian jewellery designer Thomas Heyerdahl. Heyerdahl, who usually designs conventional pieces of jewellery such as watches, rings and necklaces, came up with the idea of mixing elegance and luxury with the latest consumer technology and found a perfect combination in the iPod. Uh, iPod is an iconic uh, item, you know, like a, a design item. And I wanted to, uh, to uh, make a spectacular piece, uh, you know, to combine modern electronics and uh, handcrafted jewellery. The iDiamond is the world's most expensive MP3 player, made of solid 18 karat white and pink gold and handset with 430 diamonds. The iDiamond was sold for $32,000 at a gala fundraising dinner in aid of the Soil Association, a British charity which campaigns for organic food and farming. With most drivers spending more time in their cars these days, motorists are having their cars customised with the latest entertainment and information gadgets. And the range of products being installed is endless. Everything from built-in navigation and traffic update systems, DVD players, satellite radio and even HD radio. We're seeing a lot of integration of uh, obviously MP3 players. Uh, everybody wants an integration kit to allow allow their uh, their iPod or their MP3 player to come into the car and to be controlled by the car, to be controlled easily uh, using good menus, and that's where we're going uh, most lately. As well as super fast uh, hard drive based navigation systems, which is new for 2009. The 2009 Lincoln MKS luxury sedan is equipped with some of the very latest state of the art technology devices. The car gives the driver real-time traffic information via a hidden antenna. It even features a device that allows the driver to see where gas stations are and get the price based on the credit card transactions from the night before. With so many functions and devices increasingly available in cars, it seems that drivers won't want to get out of their cars when they get home. And Toyota have designed a prototype car so that you don't have to. Called the I-Unit, the vehicle was recently unveiled at the Japan Society in New York. The single-person car is meant to transition between outdoors on the street and inside a home. It can transform from an upright position whilst being ridden slowly to a reclined position when moving at faster speeds. The I-Unit runs mostly on an electric motor, but can also run on petrol if travelling for longer distances. We are suggesting a single-seat passenger car because in many cases uh, drivers drive along and it's wasting gas and uh, causing traffic jam. Toyota says the I-Unit is a concept car. They only made 50 of them and there are no immediate plans to bring it to market. But Hashimoto says they do intend to incorporate much of the technology developed from the I-Unit in other cars that Toyota is making now. Coming up, we go inside the home of the future and look at the gadgets you'll be using tomorrow. Ever wondered what your children's house is going to look like? Now a team of architects and designers have developed a house that promises to give visitors a glimpse of things to come. From smart mirrors to allergy-free bedrooms, all are on show at the Living Tomorrow Project. Located on the outskirts of Brussels, it has been developed by a partnership of nearly 50 companies and the Belgium government, all eager to demonstrate the latest innovations in housing. The organisers say 80% of what you see inside the house is ready for the markets, while the remaining 20% offers you a vision of what will be available soon. How does the public get to test the products of the future? That's something that manufacturers would really like to know. Through this project, members of the public and manufacturers can discuss new ideas and products so that we can make better designs that work. The house was conceived by United Kingdom-based architect Zaha Hadid, and it features all kinds of gadgets that promise to make life easier for the users. Walking through the entrance, visitors are met by an automated greeting service that tells them not to fear the future. Inside, the first room on show is a sleek white kitchen. 
new construction materials have been employed to give the room a futuristic look, similar to a spaceship. All of the kitchen surfaces have been made from Corian, a composite material made by DuPont. When you want to cook, you can press this button and the house will automatically turn on lights and music suitable for cooking. The kitchen is built around a main unit named the Z Island. Here, a touch control panel allows you to switch on a multimedia screen, change the lighting, release some pleasant aromas from three taps located next to the cooking surface or change the air conditioning. There's even an automatic function that keeps your pantry stocked by ordering new groceries over the internet. If you write on the board, tomatoes, then they will appear on your grocery list. If you want to order wine, you can pick up a bottle from the cupboard, scan it over the display and then place it onto the list. Or I can even get the computer to play a documentary about that particular wine. Anyone wanting cooking tips can simply press a button and receive advice from a professional TV chef. The Living Tomorrow House also offers plenty of energy-saving solutions. It is a fact that buildings are uh, consuming a lot of energy. More than 40% of total energy is used by buildings for climatization, for heating, for the lights. And that's why we have to build environment-friendly houses also. Not only this house, but every house is going to be built. And uh, for example, we have integrated here photovoltaic cells on the lamellas to generate also electricity to, to, to use inside. The house also uses fuel cell technology, which combines oxygen gas from the air and hydrogen gas from gas bottles hidden in the garden. The electrochemical reaction in the cell produces electricity, heat and pure water, which is released into the atmosphere, the only waste in the process. Meanwhile, you can check potential problems of water, gas or electricity consumption inside the house. This gives an example what you consume in the house, from water and rainwater, gas consumption and electri uh, electricity consumption. So you can see here when you push the button here, so it will measure how many water you have consumed. And if it becomes red, you have consumed too much. So it's a kind of indication. So there, there will be a tap who is open in the house, so you have to check it. The master bedroom also comes fully equipped with a wide range of multimedia features, all operated from one remote control. While the bathroom hasn't been forgotten in this wealth of gadgets, with a television in the shower and a vertical sunbed. Another novel feature is a smart mirror. This high-tech mirror can read a person's body temperature and their heart rate. Another eye-catching innovation can be found in the children's bedroom with a prototype of the wellness cocoon. The cocoon offers an environment where temperature can be kept under control. The constant supply of oxygen creates a healthy place, especially for people suffering from asthma or allergies. The Living Tomorrow house cost around $30 million to build and will be rebuilt in 2012. And of course, no house is complete without its very own robotic staff. At the world's largest robot trade show, which takes place in Tokyo, about a thousand robots were put on show. There were industrial robots, a humanoid robot playing ping pong against real people, and even a robot for student dentists to practice on. The showcase of around 1,000 futuristic industrial and service robots shows how Japan is increasingly looking to robot technology to help their society as it faces an ageing and declining population. Many visitors crowded around Kokoro Company's booth to watch what happens to a female android lying on a dentist's chair. The simulator android, called Simroid, was developed as a dummy patient for dental students to practice on. That hurts. Simroid twitched and blinked when a student pressed the android's teeth too hard with a tool. Simroid's chest slightly moved up and down, as if she were breathing. When dental students practice with a dummy that doesn't look human, they tend to treat it rudely and with neglect. But by using this realistic humanoid, they're more likely to treat it as if it's a real human patient. And at the opening of the Japanese Society in New York, two new types of robots were unveiled for the general public. Built in 2004 by Japanese inventor Tomotaka Takahashi, the Kroino robot is barely over one foot tall and weighs less than three pounds. It uses technology called shin walk, which makes its movements look more natural, unlike traditional stiff walking robots. 
Takahashi also showcased a sexy female robot named FT, which took him 13 months to complete. The FT model is meant to walk like a woman and can even walk like a fashion model on a catwalk. Another robot on display was an incredibly lifelike robotic baby seal, which was a big hit among the audience. Paro, created by Dr. Takanori Shibata, is already being sold in Japan and soon will be available in the United States for around $3,000. Paro has uh, tactile sensors ho uh, on the whole body, so if uh, uh, I stroke Paro, Paro feels good. And then Paro tried to be stroked by the owner, so Paro uh, learned the good behaviors for the owner. So Paro changes his character through learning. Touchscreen phones are the latest must-have gadget for today's technology lovers. But what if you could control your music player with your eyes or answer your phone by moving your fingers? Engineers at Japan's top mobile carrier, NTT Docomo, are experimenting with new ways to control mobile phones and other electronic devices. They've developed a way of controlling mobile phones through simple eye movements. The technology works with tiny sensors that are embedded in a headband, which detect nerve pulses from the user's eye movements. These actions are then converted into commands for devices like phones or computers. Dr. Fukumoto's team overcame great difficulties to make the system work. It was hard to get the device to read the very weak nerve signals from the muscles around the eyes when it was set further back on the head. By using a special filter, we were able to detect those very faint nerve signals and turn them into commands for the device. Dr. Fukumoto also invented Yubiwa, a wearable mobile phone shaped like a ring about the size of a ping pong ball. When a wearer sticks his finger in his ear, the sound travels as vibrations through his bones and into his ear, where it can be heard. Another version of the technology appears in a wristwatch that can detect the wearer's thumb and forefinger tapping together to work as a remote controller for devices like DVD players. The days when wearable technology looks like fancy, cumbersome spacesuits are over. We thought about what the future mobile phones are going to look like. One of the clues is the concept of wearable devices. The idea is to wear small devices the size of accessories that blend into everyday life. We are researching what we should wear and where we should place the devices as the mobile phone evolves over the next 20 years. Nobody knows when these new gizmos will be on sale at your local store, but you might be surprised because tomorrow is closer than you think. Gizmos and appliances can save us time and keep us entertained. They can be useful or frivolous, but there will always be a market for them because almost everyone wants the latest gadget.